You're listening to the Democratic Voice of Burma. Hello and welcome to DVB English News. I'm Joe. In this week's briefing, Fortify Rights report implicates Arakan Army in Mondal massacre. Rohingya Genocide Day commemorated in Bangladesh and Thailand. How the controversial Telegram app is being used in Myanmar. Plus, a Karen traditional wrist tying ceremony to connect, reflect, and celebrate the community's strength. Human rights group Fortify Rights called on the International Criminal Court to investigate attacks targeting hundreds of Rohingya in Mongdal Township. It implicated the Arakan Army in its report released on Tuesday. The IECC was authorized in November 2019 to investigate alleged war crimes committed against civilians in northern Rakhine State. Fortify Rights has documented that on August 5th, thousands of Rohingya fled from fighting between the AA and the military to the banks of the Naf River. They were seeking refuge in Bangladesh. Mondal residents told Fortify Rights that they were attacked by drones and artillery launched from villages under AA control. A survivor recounted that an AA drone surveilled the beach prior to the attack. On August 6th, AA troops allegedly shot and killed dozens of Rohingya civilians. Hundreds of Rohingya refugees gathered in Cox's Bazar, Bangladesh to commemorate the 7th Genocide Day last Sunday. On August 25, 2017, the Myanmar military launched a campaign that killed thousands of Rohingya living in northern Rakhine and forced over 700,000 to flee into Bangladesh. Jeremy Lawrence is the UN Human Rights Spokesperson. Despite the world saying never again, we are once more witnessing killings, destruction and displacement in Rakhine. Over the past four months, Tens of thousands of people have fled a major offensive by the Arakan army to take control of Butidong and Mongdor towns from the military. Our office has received information that both the military and the Arakan army, which now controls most of the townships in Rakhine, have committed serious human rights violations and abuses against the Rohingya. Both the military and the Arakan army bear direct responsibility for the human tragedy that is unfolding in Rakhine. Both parties must immediately cease attacks against civilians, protect those fleeing the conflict, and ensure their unimpeded access to life-saving humanitarian assistance. That was Jeremy Lawrence, the UN Human Rights Spokesperson. In May sought Thailand, nearly 100 people commemorated those killed in 2017. The National Unity Government pledged to seek justice and accountability for the military's crimes. The U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, released a statement honoring the victims, adding that America stands with Rohingya survivors in their quest for justice. The U.S. labeled the attacks against the Rohingya a genocide in 2022. Next up, DVB English news reporter Salman Dane on how the controversial Telegram app is being used in Myanmar. Due to increased scrutiny on Facebook in Myanmar following the 2017 Rohingya genocide, pro-military accounts were removed. Many found Telegram to be a haven for their views as it does little to moderate content on the platform. In 2021, the regime banned Facebook. Since then, it's only been accessible with a virtual private network of VPN. This left many with no alternative as the Telegram app offers encrypted messaging, group chats, and broadcast channels. Both pro-military and pro-democracy groups switched to Telegram since it became harder to connect with followers on Facebook. Pro-military accounts on Telegram have tried to target pro-democracy activists by calling for their arrest. DVB Fetcher Tin has documented over 600 pro-military accounts on Telegram. Some get reported and taken down. But these accounts can easily resurface since the app has little oversight. That was DVB English news reporter Salman Thane. Check out the Telegram in Myanmar explainer video on DVB English News YouTube. Coming up on Saturday, August 31st, the Karen community is hosting a traditional wrist tying ceremony at Chiang Mai University. Organizers say the event is about bringing people together and strengthening bonds. Stay tuned to DVB English News for coverage of the event. And that's it for this week's briefing. I'm Joe. Tune in every Friday for the weekly briefing podcast. 
Subscribe to the daily briefing newsletter to stay up to date with the latest on what's happening in Myanmar. Find it on our website, english.dvb.no. Find DVB English News on X, Facebook, Instagram, Threads, and TikTok. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Thanks for listening.